This video is brought to you by Ground News. Another week in the lead-up to an election here in Britain, and it's looking like yet another bad week for the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The Rwanda bill is going through the Commons yet again, and threatens to humiliate the Prime Minister. There's been even further speculation about Reform UK, with some suggesting that Farage could be on the cusp of taking control of the party once again. Both of these events have contributed to a situation where, over the weekend, speculation has increased massively about discontent on the backbenches. It seems that there might only be so much bad news that Tory backbenchers can take, and it's looking as though they could be at breaking point. So in this video, we're going to have a look at Sunak's position, and whether, in the next few weeks, he could be ousted as leader of the Conservative Party and as Prime Minister. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Now, it's worth starting this video by explaining exactly how Rishi Sunak could be ousted. In essence, there are only two viable routes open to the would-be rebels. The first is to pile pressure on the Prime Minister, to the point where he's left with no other option but to resign. This is what happened to Boris Johnson following the Chris Pincher scandal, when so many ministers resigned that he couldn't actually just keep the government running. The second viable route is for letters to be sent to the chairman of the grouping of Tory backbenchers known as the 1922 Committee. In total, 15% of the Conservative Parliamentary Party have to hand letters in, declaring that they no longer have confidence in Rishi Sunak as the leader of their party. As the Conservatives currently have 348 MPs, a total of 53 letters would have to be sent in. And even then, this only triggers a no-confidence vote, whereby at least half of the parliamentary party have to vote against Sunak in order to force him out. This is an incredibly high bar, and even when Theresa May and Boris Johnson were struggling with party unity, they managed to survive such a vote. It's worth mentioning, though, two main caveats. The first is that this is how a leadership election is usually triggered. Ultimately, the power to decide how a leadership election is held lies with the 1922 committee, something we'll get back onto a little later. The second caveat is that a vote of no confidence even being called in the first place puts a huge amount of pressure on the leader, and usually calls their leadership into question. So if this second route is initiated but ultimately fails, it's quite likely that the first route will succeed nonetheless. So now that we know how Sunak's leadership could be ended, how is it faring right now? Technically speaking, only two backbenchers have openly called for him to resign, Sir Simon Clark and Dame Andrea Jenkins. However, over the weekend, there were a few different stories suggesting that the rebels are growing impatient with Sunak. With Labour still about 20 points ahead of the Tories, the number of rebels is likely growing. Last week, Sunak failed to shut down the story about the Tories' biggest donor, Frank Hester, making racist remarks something that distracted from the government's announcement of their new extremism definition. Sunak has also frustrated the right of the party by withdrawing the whip from Lee Anderson, an act that gave Reform UK their first MP. Considering that there's a significant faction within the Tory party that thinks that Sunak should go further right, this certainly didn't help unity either. Concluding then that Sunak is not helping the situation right now, some of the rebels are reportedly thinking of trying to oust Sunak potentially a lot sooner than originally thought. Now, originally it was suggested that the rebels will hold out until the local and mayoral elections on the 2nd of May before they pounce. It was reasoned that Sunak is likely to lose these elections decisively, leaving him weak and vulnerable to attack. If the rebels coordinated and sent letters into the 22 committee right after the results, it might have been enough to get rid of him. However, following what a rebel Tory backbencher described as a vibe shift this week, it seems that the rebels may well think that it would be better to move sooner rather than later. How exactly these rebels plan to topple Sunak isn't known exactly. The most likely plan, though, would involve increasing pressure on Sunak by coordinating a flurry of letters to the 22 committee, something that effectively acted as the first domino in the downfall of both Theresa May and Boris Johnson. Another idea floated, though, is to hold a so-called shotgun election. A rebel source explained that all Tory MPs will be locked in a room, nobody will be allowed to come in or out, and they will vote in knockout rounds until there's white smoke and just one person left standing as leader. Now, as we explained at the start, this isn't how a leadership election usually works. 
However, the 1922 committee could well decide that the situation is so extraordinarily bad for the party that this would be the quickest and cleanest way to select a new leader following Sunak being toppled. Irrespective of how the rebels plan to topple Sunak, one of the biggest issues they have to settle is who would replace him. Considering how close we are to a general election, the smoother the transition from Sunak to his successor, the better for the party. Hence the, frankly, wild papal coronation plan. It seems that even this was settled at the weekend, though. Although the right of the party originally wanted the known right-winger Kemi Badenoch, it seems that they've backed down and have expressed their willingness to endorse the more centrist Penny Mordaunt. Originally, they were reluctant to back her, branding her as too woke to lead the party. However, as one rebel put it, there is an emerging sense that, if it is stick with Rishi or twist to Penny, the right would be happy to twist with Penny. Clearly, these rumours appear to have rattled Sunak and Number 10, with a number of increasingly defensive statements being reported on Monday. Stephen Swinford of The Times reported that Sunak's allies have said that he would rather call an election than be forced out of office, with them adding that people should be careful what they wish for. It's up to them. If they don't want an election, they should stop messing about. Former Defence Secretary Ben Wallace was even more blunt about this, simply saying that it's too late to replace Sunak, and the Tories need to march towards the sound of the guns. Irrespective, though, it seems that there is a real belief that Sunak could well be gone before the next election, and that the rebels are starting to coordinate. While many of us have assumed that the next election will take place between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer, the odds are certainly increasing for a mordant Starmer showdown instead. Ultimately, though, there's just no way of knowing. We'll have to keep an eye on the news and see whether the rebels force Sunak out one way or another. And lucky for you, our sponsor Ground News is your ultimate tool for easily navigating news coverage. Their app and website create really comprehensive story overviews on any topic, so you can easily compare how news is covered across the world and political spectrum. For every article reporting on a story, you'll see the source's political bias, how factual they are, and even who owns them. For example, this story about Rishi Sunak refusing to rule out a May general election. Not only can I see that there are seven sources reporting, I can quickly identify which sources have a political bias, according to ratings from independent news monitoring organisations. What's interesting about this story is that it's mostly being covered by four left-leaning news outlets, and only one right-leaning outlet. I also especially like their blind spot feed, which shows you stories that are underreported by either side of the political spectrum. For example, if you lean right, you might have missed this story about the US House of Representatives voting on a TikTok ban. It's unlike any other news app you've come across, so go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link down in the description to get 40% off unlimited access to their Vantage plan. That's only $5 a month to help an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.